Well, we know this is already one full radius length up. Let's say that's about half a radius length. Here we go. Let's say we're right here. Oh, that's a little. There we go. Our vertical distance is about half a radius length. Or 0.5 radii. That turns into our sine value. Horizontally, we're clearly more than half a radius length. And this number actually turns out to be root 3 over 2. Giving us the coordinate negative root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Okay, so what this boils down to, and yes, I'm going to erase the screen now. is that every position on a circle nope, I want the circle. There we go. can be determined by an ordered pair x, y where our radius is set to be 1. So over at the far right we have 1 comma 0 at the top we have 0 comma 1, negative 1 comma 0, 0 comma negative 1, and for here xy is understood to be cosine theta sine theta, where that's our theta. So the x value is always cosine theta, sine value is always, or y value is always sine theta. Let's look at some definitions then. Sine. What sine is, is sine is a function. Remember, a function takes an input, puts it in our magic black box, and gives us an output for sine. So sine is a function with an input of angle measure. And this can be in either radians or degrees. And an output of vertical distance above the horizontal diameter. And this is in radius lengths, or we can say radii. I know that seems like a kind of convoluted definition, but it's important to understand that for any given circle, we plug in angle measure theta. Sine tells us the vertical distance above this horizontal diameter in terms of radius lengths. Graphically, this is what we get. And we'll do this in terms of radians. And we know a full circle is 2 pi. So we have here 0 radians, pi over 2 radians, pi radians, and 3 pi over 2. Well, we already know from above our sine values, which are our y values. are going to be 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So we have sine values of 0, 1, 0, negative 1. And this will give us ordered pairs on our graph. 